Hi, my name's Daniel, and this is something interesting about Freud's nephew, Edward Bernays. Bernays is called the father of public relations, but he much prefers to call it what it is, propaganda. Edward Bernays would work with many presidents and large corporations. He helped start a war in Guatemala, turning it into a banana republic. He exploited Cold War fear and had children hide under their desks at school. He would convince half the population to start smoking, change his mind, and convince them to stop. Goebbels read his books, Hitler tried to hire him, Rockefeller did. Every government and organization used the methods Bernays first stumbled across during World War I. Bernays was hired by President Wilson's Committee of Public Information to convince an understandably hesitant America to fight in what they considered an entirely European conflict. Sure, there were reasons to go to war. Because Germany had a few too many boats? Because an obscure duke was assassinated? Because Otto von Bismarck didn't write anything down? Sure, there were reasons, but reasons are not motivations. It was the work of propagandists like Bernays to create the emotional necessity for the war. He motivated the masses not with rationale, but through latent desires. Manipulate these desires, and behavior is controllable. And it worked. An entire generation died fighting in a war they didn't believe in because a small group of intelligent men manipulated the will of the masses. The core idea of propaganda is people behave not by reason, but by emotion. The first taste we get of Bernays is spicy. He writes, Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government which is the true ruling power of our country. This seems suspect, but let's see where he's going. We are governed, our minds molded, our tastes formed, our ideas suggested, largely by men we have never heard of. This is terrifying, but Bernays says it's a logical result of liberal societies. In authoritarian governments, rulers do what they want, but in liberal societies, what should be done is up for constant debate. If everyone had their own opinion, the quantity of beliefs would fragment any organized effort. So we have voluntarily agreed to let an invisible government shift the data and spotlight the outstanding issue so that our field of choice shall be narrowed to practical proportions. After the war to end all wars, these new propagandists went to work for corporations such as General Motors, Procter & Gamble, Rockefeller, General Electric, and Modern Advertising was born. No one wanted to hire a slimy propagandist, so they changed their name to Public Relationists. That's ridiculous. They went to work applying war-inspired psychological tactics to solve the problems of peace. They would work with charities to save orphans, they would convince people to get educated, they would start wars, they would get women to vote and get people vaccinated. Truth is almighty and must prevail. It is the task of propagandists to disseminate these truths to the people in such a way that they will accept it. This knowledge morphed into a technology called manufacturing consent, and it is the largest political game ever played. The new propagandists' work should be conducted with the spirit of a laboratory. They poke and prod the public mind like an organism trying to control it. Touch a nerve at a sensitive spot and you get an automatic response from certain specific members of the organism. Like shock therapy, emotions are electrified into the anatomy of our nation, asking a scientific question. Is it not possible to control and regiment the masses according to our will without their knowing about it? They wish to study, predict, and measure human desire, opinion, and behavior in order to manufacture their will as ours, in such a way that it will come to him as his own idea. Propaganda is the inception of passions. A propagandist's goal is to create around you a world in which you will freely choose to act out a desired behavior. It's the process of using psychology to pull public focus and suggest behavior. So how is this done? There is one premise overlooking all the others. People are gregarious. Even when they sit alone in their houses, believing themselves to be autonomous choice makers, they are still a part of a group, and the group mind doesn't think in the strict sense of the word. A man deciding what stock to buy believes he is making a choice based on his own judgment, but in actual fact, his judgment is a collage of impressions stamped on him by outside influences. If he is smart, he will realize this and ask, well, who should I trust? Our first impulse is to follow the example of a respected leader. It is one of the most firmly established principles of mass psychology. Everyone is a part of a group, and every group has a leader. Therefore, it is far more effective to control the various leaders in society because you automatically gain the support of their respective groups. We now call them audiences. And then the brands start calling. They weren't paying me for my creativity, they were paying me for my reach. This is known as an appeal to authority, and it is the most effective tactic in public relations. After Theodore Roosevelt's daughter, Alice, said that Calvin Coolidge had been weaned on a pickle, Calvin had an image problem. Bernays simply invited a bunch of stars to the White House for breakfast and highlighted the pictures in the New York Times. The headlines read, President nearly laughs. A propagandist needs to merely highlight certain events to create a narrative. 
It doesn't make rational sense, but famous people have a massive sway in the public eye, as do doctors. For example, Bernays was hired by Beach and Nut Company to sell bacon. After a bit of research, he discovered that Americans prefer a light breakfast. So he persuaded doctors to publicly announce that a hearty breakfast was better for energy. Who wouldn't follow the advice of their doctor? Bernays is a genius because he created the surrounding events to lead us reasonably into his desired behavior, eat larger breakfasts. Bacon started flying off the shelves without ever mentioning it. It worked! We the people value scientists for the science they do, but for the rulers of our world, scientists are valued for the authority they hold over people. He's got a point! No, he doesn't. What? Science has a huge audience, therefore its integrity is constantly threatened by political and economic pressures. Sugar companies paid scientists to arrive at the conclusion that fat was the cause of ill health. It's why margarine is a thing. I can't believe it's not bothered. Scientific studies informed people that fat was causing health issues, therefore companies stopped adding fat to their products, but now their food lacked flavor. So how could this not have any fat? It's too good. Solution? Sugar. What? Are you getting heavy? Create the circumstance in which your benefactor is the solution. Me. This manufacturing of demand is Bernays' solution for when supply outweighs demand, as it did after World War I. If you make a million cigarettes, you need a million people to smoke one. If you build a gigantic university, you need a lot of students. If you build an army, you need a war. If you build a hospital, you need illness. This is the dark side of the capitalistic machine, and propaganda is the engine constantly pulling the veil back over our eyes. But this doesn't have to be the case. Edward Bernays wrote propaganda as a guide for manipulating the will of the masses, but also as a warning. A father gifting a rifle to his son, telling him to be careful, knowing full well that he cannot destroy the weapon because his son has already seen it and would simply build it again. So how do we use propaganda properly? Bernays argues that propaganda should be a licensed profession. Those who practice it should be qualified and watched. There should be a branch of government that conducts propaganda so everyone knows who's doing it. This is a tall order because the tactics they use are often unsavory. Whether Bernays' remedy would work in our information age is debatable, but we should start asking ourselves, do we want to be ruled by propaganda? How dare you question the fact?